Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our new seaside city of Adulis. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and History. And it's ladies' night here at Eastern Roman Empire and History. And what I mean by that is for the next few episodes, we are going to be discussing powerful and influential and notable women of the Roman Empire in this period. I've actually determined five women that I want to speak about, four of which are members of the Imperial family, two from the East and two from the West. The fifth is a private citizen, but someone who we know a lot about and is my personal favorite, but we'll get to that one last. In today's episode, we are going to start by speaking about Ilia Eudoxia, the Empress. And I believe we can show her. There she is. Now, as far as the pronunciation is considered, I have done a lot of research on this, and frankly, there is no consensus. If you search on the internet, what you will find is that some people say it should be Ilia, some say it should be Alia, some say it should be Elia, and some say it should be Elia. But after looking deep and weighing the options, what I've pretty much determined is that in Latin, I guess, as it's taught today, it's pronounced Elia. But in this time period, it was probably pronounced Ilia. So that is the way I'm going to be pronouncing it in this series. So, Ilia Eudoxia, the wife of the Emperor Arcadius. And we'll speak more about her in a little bit. But I'm glad I'm at the screen because one thing I want to do to improve my dominion, which is not very high right now, is I want to adopt some people who are quite important. So, Publius here... I would like to be my heir. Right now, Rufinus is my heir. I don't like that at all. But I guess I can't change that until Publius is older. Yeah, there's not much I could do there. I'm not exactly sure how that works, actually, how you change your heir. But either way, this gentleman here has done great things for us. He is our second best general after the Emperor himself, and he's our Imperial Master of Horse. So I would very much like him to be a part of our family. And the question is, how do I do that? Adopt. The influence cost is 50. You know what's funny? is This guy actually doesn't have that much influence. Despite being a Amazing general, the best general we have, he only has eight influence, whereas all of these random governor guys actually have more influence than he does. Even Arcadius doesn't have a ton of influence, so to spend 50 influence to gain eight actually is probably not a great idea, though I'd really love to have this guy in my army. Now, this gentleman, he just took out Ethiopia, I'm pretty sure. He's that guy. You're the governor of Syria. So he would be a net loss of three influence, but he's going to keep fighting, so his influence will grow. I think I think adopting him is a good idea, and we're going to do that. But yeah, our influence is very low. And the reason why is because, and I didn't understand this at first, but when you make men governors, they gain influence quite a bit. I thought you gained more influence winning battles, but you don't. So we're going to have to deal with that in the coming days. There might be a civil war. I'm not entirely sure what happens, honestly. Our control is good. Our power is good. It's just dominion where we're low, and that represents your family's overall power and influence. What that will do if we don't have enough influence, I honestly don't know. Perhaps you can tell me in the comments. Now, another problem we're suffering from is money. Now, our money dropped Precariously, I have since raised taxes. Well, not raised taxes, but I turned taxes on where I had them off everywhere but Syracuse. Because doing so would cause it to lower public order instead of raise it. But we're just having problems in many places. Cilicia and Bithynia, for example, are two. Bithynia doesn't make us very much money. They're lowering in public order. 
part of the expense comes from this Greek chapel. As we know, the religious buildings cost a lot of money in maintenance. They do offer a lot of public order benefits. But I'm particularly unhappy with how that's handled in this game. Because at this period of time, while paganism still exists, and there are different sects of Christianity, the writing is on the wall. The Empire is becoming Christian. So for this game to penalize you for building Christian churches, but benefit you by building pagan buildings like amphitheaters and circuses, circi, <laughs> is a real problem. It just doesn't make any sense. In my opinion, it's bad game design because the game honestly wants to encourage you to become pagan. There's no negatives to it and there's a huge benefit. You get tons of public order and when you eventually have to fight the Huns, you get a bonus because the Huns have a morale negative or a malice to Christian nations who are fighting them. It doesn't make a lot of sense and I don't like it. It's one of the aspects of the game I think the developers did a poor job on, at least if you're at all concerned about history. Now, I think it's great that they give you the option to convert to paganism. I think that'd be kind of a cool thing to do in alternate history, but they shouldn't encourage it. They should actually make it difficult so that if you do achieve it, you feel like you've achieved something like, wow, I converted the Roman Empire back to paganism going against the grain and managed to survive. I'm really good. Instead, it's almost like you should convert to paganism, which a number of other LPers have done. And I just think it's just bad game design. But anyway, back to the game itself. I need to figure out how to spend my limited resources to keep these places happy. Now, Cilicia is probably worth the most money of any place that's negative in terms of public order. And the deal here is squalor, but we're upgrading our reservoir. So that has been one turn that should solve this problem. But in addition to that, I probably should improve one of these buildings as well. Probably this, this town because it has more industry. I can't afford, unfortunately, to improve the main town, which is what I really should do. But we're going to leave it, actually, because Ethiopia is rebelling constantly, so we need to fix it. Now, I can't afford to convert this building. I, in fact, I don't even have the technology to do it. But I'm going to repair what I can. Infantry quarters. We'll just dismantle that. Wind catcher. Okay, this is a sanitation building. And we cannot afford to convert this. Actually, we can. Why is it not letting us? Oh, you must rebuild the city first. Which we can't do. So we're actually in quite a bind. What if I dismantled the town building? Would it go back to town building level 2? Is that what would happen? Let's give it a try. I mean, we're not losing anything. And we'll see. I don't know if it dismantles the whole city or what. We're going to have to find out. Now, this place has furs. So that's going to be good for us. One thing I noticed here also is it gives us plus 70 food for animal husbandry, which is sheep pens, which we have here. We don't have Pachoras, so we can't really go crazy with it, but I still think some additional food is a good thing, so I'm glad that we now have furs. Plus some wealth, it doesn't really hurt. But the problem with the large empire is you have very little money and a whole lot of stuff to spend it on. So our priest has gained a level, that's exceptional. Spread religion, yep. And increase public order. But this is spread religion some more, because he's a pontifex. What do I want here? This is this is touchy, actually. I think both of these are good. I'd like to spread religion more. This will also increase his authority, which would, well, not do much. Lower his chance of being. So plus three public order. Oh, and that's from that ability that he has to use, which he is using. Whereas this happens automatically wherever he is. You know, I haven't really seen too many benefits of Greek Christianity. Like, it doesn't improve the morale in the places where it's high. I'm not even sure what the benefit is. So we're going to go with the public order bonus instead. 
And one good thing is I think that his presence not only improves the specific region he's in, but the entire province. At least it looks that way if you look at the province. And it'll say here, public order plus six because they're being ministered to. And that's down in Axum. So it looks like it's working everywhere, which is great. We have some rebels here. What does Rome require of me? Let's upgrade these guys to our latest units, okay? And let's go take them out. Kill the cowards! Maybe give this guy a little bit of extra experience. Nice, just blood everywhere, okay. We don't really need warriors, but I don't want to lower integrity. There aren't any captives, as far as I can tell. Yeah, there's 44 captives. Oh, wow, we actually lost a unit of Lanciare Signores. That is amazing. Advance. Which should go to show that even in the littlest battles where you're highly predicted to win, bad things can happen. You should always fight on your own. For some reason, we're not having attrition, which is good, but we're going to go back to Axum. Okay. Hidden agent, great. Rank gained, yep. That's our priest, right? Mm-hmm. He now has Warcry 2, which is a great ability. Much better than Arcadius's scouting or whatever. And he gained an ancillary. Interesting. The Pancratian Gloves. And the Eastern Turncoat. This is 15 morale versus Eastern Empires. That's great. Yeah, we'll leave that. Yeah, that's fine too. Alright. Sorry, we've been taking a long time in this episode just discussing things. And we haven't even got to the history yet. But we're going to go to Bithynia. Or actually, we should go to C Cilicia. Because they're worth money and they're unhappy. So maybe Servius can help us over there. And that's working. Public order plus six. And the, hopefully with the squalor getting fixed, that'll help us a lot. Rufinus is still blockading this port, but I'm really not sure if I want to attack them or not. Because even if I could take out the rebels, that would be fine. But then we have Ostrogoths, we have Marcomans, and then further up here we have Saxons, more rebels, and more Marcomans. So this is just, it's looking really bad for the Western Romans, and I don't know if my one army here, as good as they are, and they're not even a full army, right? They're only 17 of 20. I don't know if we can stem the tide, and it might be in our best interest, since he's such a good general, to get out of here and to move him back to our own lands. I want to help the West, but as you can see, here's a whole other army here of Roxolanians, and I don't believe I'm at war with them. I guess I am. Since it's not telling me attacking foreign assets is an act of war, but I can't apparently attack them. I don't see why not. But there you have it. So I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. Our troops are... Well, they're not better. They haven't been upgraded yet. I'm not sure if these guys would be part of the battle. They probably would, and they have cataphracts. It just feels like there's not much I can do here to really help the West. I could besiege the city and have them attack me, and then maybe do a kind of corner camp action, but like me, they probably just have really good infantry. The Warriors of Ravenna. Just not sure what to do here. Can't move much, which is really interesting since he does have full movement. Hmm. So Milan, the capital, is under siege by these guys. Full stack, 20 of 20. 
I just, it's a sad day, but I can't. I can't defend them. We're going to move back and shore up our own lands. We might want to go by sea. I'm not sure if these guys will let us walk through their lands. But it's a sad day, but what are you going to do? Here is Arcadius. If we took out the East Germanic Separatists, it would make the Huns like us a lot more. That might actually be a good idea. Let me just make sure here. Yeah, the Huns don't like us too much. And they are at war with the East Germanic Separatists. So yeah, that would improve my standing in their eyes, and it would give us another province as well. And it would also help us with defenses, because you would assume that the hordes would eventually come through here. Alright, let's do it. And I'm going to let my allies just do their own thing. Whoa, it shall be. Ooh, they have two stacks, huh? I'm not too worried about it. I think Arcadius can take them. Maybe next turn we'll get some mercenaries. Okay. Moving on. This has been taking way too long. Rufinus. I'm sorry, Western Romans, but... No. We likely will not. Right now, we're spending about a thousand gold a turn on our navy, which I need a bigger navy, but as you can tell, money's kind of scarce. Now, I've been asked why I keep this guy when he costs money to maintain, and my answer is simply that he's our recruiter. He's the one who recruits our cavalry to eventually deliver to our troops. And I'm actually going to want to recruit some more and move them to either Arcadius. Or to really? Come on. Run out the clock, guy. There we go. And you know what else? I completely forgot about this legion here. They're just they're just camping out here in Armenia or something. So I'm gonna force march them home. Armenia's probably pissed that we walked through their lands, but not much I can do about that. And these are mercenaries. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. So they're costing us extra money, so we're going to get rid of them. We should have done that a while ago. Actually, we have more mercenaries too. Okay, here's the Constantinople guy. What do you have? Step-mounted brigands. Is that a mercenary unit? No, I think they were just a levy unit, perhaps? Yeah, maybe sit in Marcinopolis for right now, just in case the East German Separatists find some way to get past us. And this guy. Oh, man. I'm wondering now if Syracuse is worth it. It would be worth it if I could take these two provinces, but I'm not going to attack my brothers, the Romans. So, we're currently going down five a turn. This is good in terms of squalor, so what's the problem? Instability, immigrants, and events. Okay, that the Arianism, right. That'll cure itself. Then here we have the Picts. You know, if the Picts end up taking this, I may take that back from them. That's a possibility. Alright, so finally, video's almost over. We can end the turn. So, Ilia Eudoxia. Now, one thing this game gets correctly is her father was a man by the name of Flavius Bauto. Now, he was actually a Romanized Frank. He was 100% barbarian. So that means that Ilia was what they call a semi-barbara, which is a half-barbarian. We're assuming this. 
I respectfully ask that you do something. The Gaetulians? Where are they? Oh, whatever, sure. Now, we don't know this for sure. I mean, she could have been 100% Frank herself, but that would make a lot of sense that a Roman emperor would marry someone like that. I mean, anything's possible, but the general consensus is that she's probably half Roman, half barbarian, though we know nothing about her mother. We also don't know exactly when she was born, though we can assume that she is roughly around the same age as Arcadius. That's not guaranteed, again, like most of what we know about her, but it's a possibility. Now, her father, despite being a Frank, was the Magister Militum of the Western Roman Empire, or one of them. And if you remember what that is, that's the highest rank of general who commands the field armies. All right. Three units, including their... Wow, that is a lot of units. That is a lot of units. Nevertheless, I think we could do it. If we, if we just are smart and corner camp and maintain our testudo, we could easily avoid most of their ranged attacks. And most of their army is ranged. Hmm. Still, if we lose, that would be a terrible blow to our empire. I think it might be more sensible to to fight this one out at a later date, at a time that is more advantageous to us, where we're not fighting their entire force at once. Retreat! I did this once before in this series where I retreated, and it was a good thing. Like, for example, now. So now we're in much better terrain. Our numbers are much more suited for this, and it believes we're going to do a lot better. So, ladies and gentlemen, this episode is running out of time, so next episode we'll fight this battle, and we will talk more about Ilia Eudoxia. Sorry that we didn't get a lot of history done in this one, but there's just a lot of maintenance that needs to be done in my empire, because we need to increase the money, and uh, it's hard to do, especially if something crazy happens like the Huns or the Persians declare war. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.